Let's get the tiny one. No, no. Because tomorrow going back to Singapore. <laughs> Not tomorrow, they are not tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Next tomorrow, right? Yeah. Okay. That's why we are taking the sheep bone. Last is 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 Last I'm happy. I'm very happy. Senior am very happy. I'm very happy. As I am in the crop of 47 go last dinner at Augusta, Australia, Augusta, Sangre Salad, not on the show. Yeah, yeah, no, no, good. Your size monomon for it. Your size monomon for it. I'm the cameraman, Guzzi. As I go, no, it's a test. I'm
to share his feelings about the country, and it's something that uh, you as GC, you are the Indigenous people from Nepal, as we spoke about up in Kananara. Okay, so you have a connection to land and to your country when you're there, as does Book Tien. So it's a relationship that um, some people don't understand, but certainly Book is trying to share that knowledge with us, and he shares that through his uh, the ditch and the feeling he has that he, he gets strength from people and in country. So mate, that was absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you. sounds come from my lips and my voice and my cheeks are going up and down because I'm breathing in while I push out but here's your song fellas the Gurkha song <laughs> Different country there, it's tropical, it's hot. We have everything we need as traditional people to be jammed in. We have lots of people there, and I'm very, very lucky, very privileged to be uh, part of this community here now. I came from the east coast to the west coast to here into Paradise, into Wadandi country here about 12 years ago. And because I'm a ditch player, because I have a cultural connection to family, because I, I speak about culture all the time. One of the first things that I did was introduce myself to the local people, the Wadandi people, the Webb family. And they, they've adopted me. They've allowed me in. They said, come on in, mate. This country is yours, it is ours. But out of respect for Wadandi people, I never claim to be Wadandi. I, I, I don't talk about Wadandi culture as if it's mine. I'm Bundjalung man. But we're all Aboriginal here. And we all understand land and country. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to welcome you in as Nepalese people into this wonderful, beautiful Wadandi country on behalf of Uncle Wayne Webb, who is the elder from here. And I'm very, very privileged to be able to do that. And the way that I do that is that I sing off country with my dish, with my yadaki out here. And I've got a few of them. And I can play for you, fellas. I, I have wanted to do this with, with, with Nepalese, with people from your corner of the world for a long time because Look, every indigenous culture, every indigenous people from every country, through those 10,000 years of generation after generation of singing your song, passing along your law, what did you guys call it, Kaita? Kaita. Kaita. Culture. 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 You understand it. And we, our, our connection to culture comes through songline. Now, songline with our people, with Aboriginal people, is something we've passed along. It's sung to us by our uncles and our aunties when we're little. And it connects us to our land. So my song line connects me to Byron Bay, to the east coast, Bundjalung country. It connects me to salt water. The sea eagles over there, the kangaroo there, that country over there, it's fresh water, salt water. Here, the word isn't Jarrah, the word is Buja for this country here. And my connection to this country comes through the same way. My song line is through walking on country, by being aware, by, by listening to the sea, by tuning into everything around me, just like you guys do when, when you're out in the But that real connection doesn't just come to you. you. You've got to grow up in that community, as I know you, have, you fellas have done. When you grow up in a place that's extreme, where it's high or cold, or the land demands a lot of you, and you really have to live there, what you get out of your culture is what's proportional to what you put into it. 
That's what you get out of your community. You put into your community, you get back from the community. And that's how it works. Right? So, first song I'm going to play for you is for country. I feel this country here. When I'm singing to you, I'm aware of the ground. I'm aware of the wind out there. I can feel the trees. It's salt water and fresh water. So I draw from that and I play back onto country. Around we go. Now I'm going to play a second song and it's for you, for people. Because without people, we don't have healthy country. Right? We need healthy people, healthy country to live together. So, first song called Fuja. <clears throat> country and to all of you present on behalf of the GC and the SBF um, and say what a privilege it is for us to be here and to share in this amazing country. Um, excellent. OI is clearly about excellence and it's a legacy Colin that we owe a great deal to you for personally but also to the team, the facilitators, that year on year have looked after our officers so well. And it's not only the professionalism and the knowledge of your particular craft, but the knowledge of the country and the sharing of the country and the place we're in that you always impart to our men as we're going through this. But more importantly, is the attitude and the spirit you bring to each and every one of these expeditions. And you can see it in the friendships and the relationships that are built uh, over a very short period of time, but that are remembered uh, for a very, very long time, for many, many years, in fact, for, for, the, rest of, uh, for the rest of our lives. And you hear of those relationships, you hear of people talking about it when we're back in Singapore and also when they're travelling around the world as people do these days and end up uh, in the far front corners uh, of the globe. And of course, it goes without saying that you're all very welcome uh, in Singapore and in the GC. And there's been some talk of that, but we would love to see any and all of you over there at any time. You're all uh, incredibly welcome. Um, it's a great pleasure to see this, ex this exercise, uh, this venture starting again after three years. It's been a long three year period. It's been a tough three year period. I think everybody has a COVID story. Everybody has been impacted in some way or other, but it's fantastic to see this kind of program reinitiate as soon as we can get it going and I have absolutely no question at all that it will continue for many, many more years to come. We get a huge amount out of it. It's a huge enabler for our officers. Uh, and individually, personally, they all grow, they all develop, and most importantly, they all enjoy their time uh, on the expedition. Uh, it is a fantastic program, it's a fantastic in initiative, and we're very privileged, we're very grateful to all of you uh, for making it such. To our hosts, Natalie and Gary, thank you very much indeed, both of you, what a fantastic spot, what a fantastic location. Uh, again, it's a real treat, it's not what I was expecting to come to uh, on the visit, it's a great, great treat to be able to come by so, so special and unique, and again, I hope that this relationship continues uh, for years to come. Um, so, my thanks to all of you. Uh, it is an outstanding program. It's an excellent opportunity. So, Guruji Bhai Harule, Sabajan Alai Kilo Shabash, Parasa. Thank you, sir. Sabakon Namana Dekimo Akin Garbasu. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.
experience that very few people have. And you will now be able to go back <clears throat> and share your experiences because they will understand that you through the same thing as you. Whereas if you talk to somebody who hasn't been on a cock rock, um, they won't understand. So well done to all you guys for getting through it. And um, for us, we, we have always got the best staff that we can. And you've seen how the facilitators have looked after you and coached you and so on. And um, for us, it's been a wonderful experience. Course number 47, never have thought that would happen. And every Gurkha group that comes here are fantastic people. And, you know, it's enriched our lives by having you as a customer. So long live Croc Rock. <laughs>
being so compliant. All right? I didn't realise his actual quite physique until we got to the soccer game where he was running circles around me. <laughs> so I believe he's the representative for the Gurkha Force. Okay, with the SBF and soccer, yeah? Yep. And he's, he, he showed it and he played and he taught me a few things. So thank you very much, my friend. Okay. So there was many times when, you know, we go up the big hills and we're not sure which creek plan to go down because it could lead to either a very big fall and death or a go trap. Okay, so, and Mr. Santos here was always on the ball and he was very vital in teaching some of the junior members or the less confident members in navigation. Okay, so thank you very much for getting us to Lake Alba. <laughs> so whenever we had any downtime, or when we were walking through the 40 degree heat, when everyone's heads were down and morale was low, he'd play the best of the music and then mix in a bit of edge. So Rajesh here, uh, he may not have a cook certificate, but he was Team 2's Master Chef. Okay? No matter what we caught, we were very lucky with the fish. Okay, I think we ate five different types of fish. Okay, oh. hear that team one? Five different types of fish. <laughs> <laughs> right. and he made sure morale was high with good food and he was always there getting things started. When everyone was tired, he was there with some of the junior members making sure everyone was going to be well fed and looked after. So Rajesh, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> Make sure that they all, everyone got up safely, and Tara was always there making sure that the team was always going in the right direction, nav checking and assisting the, the more junior guys and junior Gurkhas and helping with navigation and other things out the field. So, Tara, thank you. Thank you very much. How anybody else back? Check, 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 check. Now, so, Mr. Prakesh here, okay, every day I was asked by Mr. Took. Okay, and Prakesh, on who is the funniest man in the team. Okay. Every day, without a doubt, right, they'd both try and crack out the best joke, right, and they'd both try and make me laugh, okay, and they did a very good job at it. But at the end of the day, it was a team, uh, team decision that Mr. Prakesh was number two. Right? <laughs> However, he was the most handsome man in the section. <laughs> always looking after me as the chief medic and he was there when everyone needed to get splinters or blisters popped. He was always there willing to help with the medic kit, okay? So thank you Mr. Prakash. Thank you very much. Come on, come on. Alright, so uh, a bit of spiel about Mr. Took. Okay, uh, Took is one of the senior gurus on, on, uh, on our team, okay? And he was very, uh, very valuable uh, in making sure the morale uh, was always up in the team. He was always willing to crack a joke, point out something silly that someone was doing, uh, and he was always uh, making us laugh throughout the hardest days, okay? So, thank you very much. Oh, my God. Okay, so relax, we'll have some, uh, some dinner and then we'll start some settings after that. Thank you.